Hello and welcome back to Things Made Simple. About seven months ago, a YouTuber named Benji of Benjao Modular designed an Atari punk console synthesizer using a couple of 555 timer chips. Now, I know that there's a lot of these kind of things out there, but this particular synthesizer he put on a PCB about the size of a business card. He then put his contact information on it, just like a regular business card, and he called it the synth card. Now, this was a brilliant idea, and it piqued the interest of several other DIY enthusiasts who jumped in to help standardize the format. And since then, a few new modules emerged, including a, a triple VCO LFO by Carltron, and an 808 kick drum and an MS-20 filter by Juanito Moore from the channel Modular for the Masses. And in fact, a lot of the conversation about this uh, that I've seen has been on the Modular for the Masses Discord. Now, our destination on this channel is still to create a Eurorack size module for the YM3812 with the screen and the keys and all that cool stuff. But seeing all the creative activity in the Discord really got me thinking and wondering. We've fit everything so far on a single breadboard, but would it be possible to fit it all onto a PCB about the size of a business card? Well, of course, this wouldn't be a video if you couldn't, so yes, you can. And this includes all of the functionality that we've talked about in all the videos so far. So let's get some business cards printed. I think maybe we should put one of these together. Now you can find the bill of materials as well as some instructions on thingsmadesimple.com, but all of the values for each of the components are also printed directly on the PCB. Let's start with the resistors. Just match the value to the PCB and solder it in place. Then we can add some diodes. Note there are two different kinds of diodes. There's the 1N4148, which is the normal sort of signal diode, as well as a 1N4001, which is a rectifier diode, and that just gives you reverse polarity protection on the power input. As always, be sure to match the stripe on the board to the stripe on the diode before you solder it on. Now for the ceramic capacitors. These are all 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitors, and they can pretty much go in whatever direction you want. But there are also a couple of larger electrolytic ones, and they're polarized, so be sure to make sure that the stripe on the capacitor is facing the white silk screen on the PCB. Now we can add an LED. This one is also polarized, so the longer wire is going to go in the round hole, and the shorter wire is going to go in the square hole. The direction of the voltage regulator follows the shape of the silk screen, so just make sure you have it in the right way around. When you put the ICs on the board, make sure to line up the notches. Then solder one corner on each side to make sure that they're flat. And then, once you've got them in flat, just solder the rest of the pins in. I find this part to be quite satisfying, actually. Now, when you're putting in the Thunkacon jacks, make sure that you use a stereo jack on the MIDI, that's the green one, and a mono jack on the audio, that's the black one. Now, solder in the pin headers for power, audio, and programming. Now we just need a reset switch. Mm, how about this one? And that's all the soldering we need to do. Time to pop in the ICs. Make sure the notches on the ICs match the notches on the sockets. And as you're pushing them in, be careful not to bend any pins. Sometimes a tool helps to just kind of get them aligned properly. Now that everything's in place, let's upload the firmware. This works just like it worked in the breadboard. Hook up the FTDI cable to the header at the top of the board, and then use the Arduino environment to upload the code. Here I'm uploading the code from video number 8, which you can find on GitHub. And well, that's it. That's how you build it. Let's see if it works. First off, we need to power the board. The VIN on the bottom left and the bottom right pass through a voltage regulator, so you can use anything DC from 6 to 12 volts. A 9-volt battery would work fine, or even just the top two pins on the 12-volt Eurorack connector. 
Alternatively, you could plug a regulated 5-volt power supply into the port at the top of the board. This could be an external battery or some other regulated power source. But be careful, because there's no protection up there if you use more than 5 volts or plug something in backwards. Other than that, just plug MIDI in using that same dongle that we used in the previous video, and then sound into the audio out, and you've got yourself a YM3812 synth card. Now, one of my favorite things to do with this module is to play video game music using general MIDI. So let's do another side-by-side -side comparison of AdLib emulation in ScumVM versus sending MIDI through this module. And what better music than the intro to Leisure Suit Larry 3? Well, I have to say, I was personally a bit surprised by the differences here. Setting aside the differences in the sound patches, because those are definitely different, there's quite a bit more complexity in the general MIDI version of the music. Like the middle section, you get that very simple melody in the ad-lib version, but the steel drums and some extra percussion in the general MIDI version. Now, the sound chip should be the same. I mean, sure, it's emulated by ScumVM, but the game was designed for the same OPL2 sound chip. So it makes me wonder why the instrumentation was toned back so much for the AdLib version when clearly the sound chip is capable of doing so much more. If anyone knows why the instrumentation is so different, leave a comment. I'd be fascinated to hear about it. Okay, so if you're asking how you get one of these, it turns out to be super easy. I've added a synth card folder with the schematics and the Gerber files on GitHub. Just download the synth card ym3812.zip file and then drag it to this little spot here on JLC PCB or whatever PCB manufacturer you want to use. For the record, JLC PCB is not sponsoring this video. I just happen to use them. Anyway, this is going to take you to an order form. Now, my only request here is that you choose lead free Hazel instead of the with lead version. That way you can safely handle the boards without worrying about lead poisoning and stuff. Other than that, choose your favorite color. You can uh, click specify location on the remove order number option. Actually specify it in the Gerber file. And then for about $3 plus $16 in shipping and handling, you can get not one, but five copies of this synth card sent to your doorstep. Now, this isn't really a promotion because I kind of get nothing out of this deal. But if you want to like this video and subscribe, and then maybe pass the extra boards on to your friends so that they can like and subscribe too, well, I'd super appreciate that. Other than that, build it, share it, and relive those OPL2 glory days. I also want to send another big thank you out to the SynthCard community for creating the standards and inspiring so many cool projects, especially Benji for coming up with the idea, and Juanito for fostering the conversation on the Modular for the Masses Discord and Carl Tron for creating this awesome KiteCAD PCB template that I started with for this board. It made the whole process super easy. If you want to join the fun, head on over to the Modular for the Masses Discord. And as always, I've written everything up in an article on thingsmadesimple.com, along with some extra instructions and a bill of materials so you know what parts you need in order to build the board. Well, I hope I've inspired you to build your own general MIDI AdLib synth card. If you do build one, leave a note in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Things Made Simple.